All right, hi everybody. So what we're gonna be talking about today is um, why you should join Snapchat. And I'm specifically speaking to two groups of people over here. Real estate agents, those who wanna use Snapchat to help grow their business, and for real estate brokers who also wanna use Snapchat to help grow their business. Hope you guys find this informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to write it down, and I'm happy to send over the slide you're about to see afterwards. So, start over here. First of all, the question is, why join Snapchat in the first place, right? Why should you do it? And I hear a lot of people, I've been in Snapchat pretty heavily now for a little bit, and I get a lot of people telling me they think it's a young platform, nobody knows that's on it, so on and so forth. Um, and you know, I'm not gonna spend too much time on trying to like convince you about the demographics of it. I'm just gonna put it quite simply. Fortune Magazine, their target market isn't 13 and 14 year olds. Fortune Magazine just put Snapchat on the back cover of their magazine. I know someone that works for them and they show me what's about to come out. So if Fortune Magazine is putting it on their back cover, it's a pretty expensive spot. You can try to guess for yourselves who do you think Snapchat is going after, what's their target market and audience. So, reasons that I love Snapchat. First of all, easy way to create quick content on the fly. Very basic editing, audience expects raw unadulterated experience. So, the thing for me is, whenever I want to put something on Facebook or if I want to put something on a different platform, I have to put a lot of work into making it perfect. And you can, you can do a lot of editing of photos, you can do, there's a lot of, even on Instagram, right, you can, you can spend a lot of time perfecting your photo before you put it on Instagram, which limits how much you're going to put on Instagram because you have to spend so much time on it, right? When you're in Snapchat, you have very basic editing. You really can't do all that much to edit your photos. And if you can't do all that much to edit your photos, well then, you know, your only option is to take it and to put it online or to take a video and put it online. So you're forced to create contact really, to create stuff really, really easily. And that gives you the opportunity to share more. So instead of being held back and, you know, handcuffed a little bit by having to make things perfect, here you have the free reign to just go out there and just start talking to your audience in a video, text, or messaging form. Also, the audience expects a raw, unadulterated experience. So when I think of like our Instagram account in the company, I'm always thinking about how does it look when someone goes to my Instagram account? Do all the pictures look right? Are they all positioned right? That's a brand proposition. It, 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 how we look on Instagram or, or how we look on Facebook is how our company should look. It's similar to how great our property brochures should look. They should look perfect. And that's how I look at those platforms. And when you go onto Instagram, when you go onto Snapchat, people are not expecting any of that. They're simply expecting you, the real you, the non-makeup you. The, the, you don't say when you go on Snapchat, hold on, let me put on some make makeup and then I'll go on Snapchat. You just go on Snapchat. It's in your pocket and you just go. So these are reasons why it's super easy to create content. Another reason Snapchat's great is it captures people's undivided attention. So, let me go through this pretty quickly for you. Number one, first of all, it's due to the temporary nature of the platform. Snaps disappear right after you see them, and Snap stories only last 24 hours. So, if you guys aren't on Snapchat, you need to go on and play with it. And you need to give yourselves really two weeks to understand the platform. There's a learning curve when you get on it. The most thing you're going to realize right away that at the beginning you're going to hate, but then come to love, is when you post something on Snapchat, it disappears. Now what that means is I send you a message, for example, in Snapchat, and the person gets, you send somebody a message, they get the message, they look at it, and then it's gone right away. What does that force that person that's getting the message to do? It forces them to look at it, not look away. If they look away, the message is gonna disappear. Not look at it and say, oh, I'll look at it again later and pay attention later. No, you gotta pay attention to it now because it's gonna disappear, which is why it's a temporary platform. And Snap stories are the same way. Snap stories are stories that you can feed on through Snapchat. They last 24 hours. You can't pause a snap. So if you create a snap story, which we'll get into in a second, it just keeps on going. If you look away from your screen, you're gonna miss the story. If you look away from the screen, if you can, you have to start from the beginning of the whole story. Nobody wants to start from the beginning of the whole story. So once again, the temporary nature and the fact that you can't pause causes your audience to look at what you're doing, pay attention, be fully involved in the experience. Last time, last thing, this is 
kind of brings it home. People sometimes feel tense when first learning to use a platform because they are not used to being forced to pay attention. So I start on Snapchat and I'm like looking at Snap stories and then, and then, then they're gone. I can't pause it and, and I got a phone call coming in and I want to pick up the phone but I can't because I'm going to lose where I am or somebody sends me a message and I don't want to look at the message. I'm doing something else. I want to look at it later and I can't and I'm being forced and I feel a little tense. And after a while, that feeling of tense goes away and it actually turns into pleasure because what's ended up happening for me on Snapchat is I'm actually there, present, in the moment when I'm interacting with people. So when I get something, the person knows I'm getting it and they know I'm looking at it and I'm paying attention and I can't push it away. I can't let me deal with it later. I'm forced to deal with it now. It's one of the reasons that people think Snapchat is the closest thing to human interaction that exists on a social platform because when I'm talking to you right now, all you guys, I'm talking to you right now, we, we have a conversation. What I say, once I say it, it's gone. You can't hit replay unless it's being recorded, of course. It's gone, which is how human interaction works. Same thing with Snapchat. If you don't listen, it's gone. You can't get it back just like the human form of communication. It's more authentic. When you're looking at a snap, first of all, because you can't edit it too much, and second of all, just the way that it works and records, you're seeing from the point of the view of the snapper, the person who is sending out the snap. So when I take out my phone and I snap something, you're seeing it from my point of view. And so you're in the experience with me, you feel like you're in the room with me. You see what my life is like, and there's no faking it. You can't hire someone to snap for you, because you're there, you know? It's like, there are different tools and tricks we'll talk about about what you can do, but you definitely can't fake it. It is just you. Companies are trying to figure out how to use Snapchat because companies usually hire other people to manage their social channels. You can't hire someone else to run your Snapchat channel. It's a complicated thing we'll get into in a minute. Those who snap are passionate about it, okay? I was explaining to you the process I went through from the first two weeks to later on, and now I'm in this situation with Snapchat where I love it. I, every day, make sure before the day's over that I'm checking out certain people's snaps because it won't be there the next day and I'm gonna miss vital information. I feel like there's certain people that I'm in their life and when I don't watch it, I don't know what happened to them yesterday. And if they're people I care about, I want to know what happened to them yesterday. And so uh, if, if I go to bed and I haven't seen a snap, I feel like I missed something. And usually I actually did miss something because I follow people that I care about. And it's like if you hang out with your friend all day and you, you know, hang out with your friend for a day, you kind of missed out your friend a little bit, right? That's basically what it's about. When you join the community, you feel like you're connected through technology like you never have been before. Also, because it's a new platform, and if you join it now, you're on the earlier side of things. Um, so, because of that, anyone else that you meet on the platform, you know that they're new to it as well, and you form bond right, bond right away. So now, let's talk about how Snapchat functions for real estate agents specifically. Number one, what is a private snap? You guys can go into YouTube and watch plenty of videos on Snapchat, but a private snap is similar to sending a text message, but it disappears right after the recipient receives it. What can you do as an agent? What, how can you use private snaps to grow your business and build your relationships? Number one, preview apartment snaps. When you go into apartments and you're seeing cool apartments, go and snap little previews of it and send it to people. Maybe you have clients that are looking to buy an apartment or a house. Go into the house, go into the apartment, snap it, send it to them. They're gonna look at that video. It's, it, it, they're gonna be very involved with that and you're gonna know when they see it. Uh, cultural or location highlights. Take a moment, you see something cool going on in your environment, you wanna show, if you're a real estate broker, you're selling an environment, you're selling a home or an apartment in a neighborhood, snap certain things that are going on in the neighborhood that happened that day. You could go to extreme, if there's a fire truck coming down the street and you don't know what's going on and you snap it, you just brought somebody into the reality of that place. Just like there's a cultural event going on and now you snap at a cultural event, uh, uh, whatever it may be, you're bringing people into the culture of that place. And basic communication snaps when you're talking to people, it's just a good way to communicate because you know they're forced to pay attention when you're communicating with them. Snap stories. Snap stories are something that, similar to posting something on Facebook wall, available to whomever you want for 24 hours. Try to keep a theme story throughout the day. So snap stories are a combination of 10 second snaps that you just keep on building your story and it stays for 24 hours. So when you're doing this and you have the option if you want to post a snap to, a walk to, your, to your story or to just send it individually to people, but when you do that, very important, make a story to it. Understand that people are being forced to look at you. So if you have a snap that's really boring and it's not interesting, they're gonna stop watching you. 
it's game's over. And it's once somebody stops watching you on Snapchat, they're not coming back. They know the real you and they don't like the real you. So you better not do stuff that you wouldn't do on hanging out with your friends, basically, right? So uh, it's very important. Build a story throughout the day to keep them also interested. So when they start the day and they start watching you, they remember to come back and look at you again later because they want to know what happened during your day. Maybe you're going to meet a client. They want to know what happened when you met the client and what happened afterwards, as an example. So here are some things you could do with Snap Stories that I would do as a real estate agent. Number one, brand yourself as a property expert through property tours. Take tours, spend a day if you're going on tours and you should be going to preview inventory, that's what you should do as a real estate agent, get educated. So while you're going there, why not free throughout the day, hey, I'm going today to check out a whole bunch of properties, it's gonna be a fun day, and you snap the properties you're going to, but you also snap personal stuff, like when you stop to get a soda and you meet with somebody and you talk, or you have some jokes or you're playing with friends, whatever it may be, don't make it boring, don't make it dry, don't just, here's a property, here's a property, here's a property. Don't do that. If you do that, you shouldn't be on Snapchat. That's not what it's there for. You want to take a property photo? Stick a property photo on Facebook and write a little description of it. You don't stick it on Snapchat. It's a human experiential form. Teach in the story form to educate clients in real estate. I was just explaining that earlier. Share some of your professional or personal life. It will help you boost your reputation. People are going to get to know the real you on Snapchat. So use this opportunity to show the real you that people are going to like and enjoy participating in. So you can give advice, you may be in a situation dealing with a client, and you might talk about what you're thinking about. What is the struggles that you're dealing with and how did you handle that? And so by talking through these personal life situations and professional life situations, you are going to be able to boost your reputation because if people like the advice you're giving and the thoughts that you're having, they're gonna continue and stay with you. Build better relationships with other agents by sharing your experience, struggles, and successes. We are all in the trenches together and can use Snapchat to learn from one another. Now this is big. Real estate agents, it's not an easy business. Nobody thinks, I mean, real estate agents know it's not an easy business and it's always nice to talk to another agent and share your experiences and your stories. That, you know, you feel good when you talk to other people. Use Snapchat as an opportunity to connect with other people. This is something that as an agent can make our, our, our community as real estate agents so much tighter. And I think that's a very valuable thing uh, in your business. Now, lastly, share experience you're having with clients. This is something you could do. I'm going to give you an example of sharing an experience with clients that I, I really like. Introduc introduce a story. So, let's say here's a story right here. This could be a Snap story for your day. Uh, you're going out to meet a client and you're going to go show them an apartment. So you go into Snap and you say, hey, it's Michael. I'm going to be going to meet a client, going to show them a two-bedroom apartment today. I really hope they like it. I'm not really sure. They want views. I don't know if it has views. Let's go and find out. And then you go into the apartment and you snap a couple of things so the person sees the apartment. And then after the apartment showing is over, you get back on snap later and you say, show the apartment, they really loved it. Or I show the apartment and they didn't like it, as you saw, it didn't have the views I thought they were looking for, but we're gonna, we're, gonna, you know, we're gonna do something else together. Now, your clients may be cool with being on snap themselves. People, you'd be surprised when you say to somebody, you wanna get on snap, it starts with a no and three seconds later it's, oh yeah, sure, well I can try that. And they might want to get on Snap and talk about their experience, what did they like, get involved, so on and so forth. So telling stories in that way I think is valuable. Think of real estate reality shows like Million Dollar Listing. They tell stories. You can now tell a story like they do. You can reach the same audience as they do. It's so easy. It's like, it's amazing. Amazing opportunities here. All right, now let's jump into functionality for real estate broker owners. Now I am a broker owner, so I think a lot about how can I use Snapchat to help grow my business and, 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 and just build my reputation, etc. So, number one, Snap meetings with executives and marketers. Old school, before we had Snapchat, it was very hard for your agents to be able to see what really goes on in your company. What do the marketers who do marketing for your brand think and talk about? What kind of strategy sessions do you have inside your company about your business and how you want to help your agents? These are things that if you're now able to get your agents a little bit into the thinking of your company and talks that are going on with some of your marketing and executives, your agents will feel more connected with you and they'll be more connected with the brand. Because you're putting your brand on display, you're being transparent with it. I think that is, that is so amazing and I, I love that. I'm excited to see when everyone gets this, I'm excited to get into other companies, doesn't matter what kind of companies, and see what goes on behind the scenes. Because some of it's probably amazing and it's unfortunate they haven't been able to share it till now. But they're going to be able to share it till now. It's going to be crazy eye-opening. The world's going to get a lot closer in this way. So um, this is something for me. I began to see this. I didn't instruct this to happen, but my agents, they don't call me right now. When they want to get in touch with me, first thing they do is go on Snapchat. 
and they first go and see what I'm up to, where am I at in my story. If I say I'm walking into a listing appointment, so to speak, or I'm going in an agent interview, whatever it may be, they know not to call me for an hour. They're with me in the present moment, and they're also seeing what I'm doing. For example, they're seeing right now that I'm giving this presentation. They're seeing that I care to educate, and I care to help others, which is what this is all about. And I want them to do that as well. I want them to have those same experiences and share knowledge with other people. So by them seeing what I'm doing here, hopefully that's gonna help them better themselves as an agent, help them better their business and better their relationships. Another thing that I use as a broker owner, Snapchat is training and highlighting agents. This has been huge for me. So Snap educational bite-sized training lessons for agents. So sometimes I do something I call a snap storm. Okay, other people call it a snap storm as well, which is a very quick, you take like, a hunt, like a, an hour and 30 minute talk that you could give, and you cut it up into 10 second snaps. Okay, and you, you do it, in, you end up in one minute, which is 10, six minute snaps, putting together your whole hour and a half speech. It's a very quick way to share knowledge, and some people don't wanna sit for an hour and a half and watch a video, or 45 minutes, they want a minute and 20 second change their life educational moment, and that's what I do twice a week. Um, is one of the things that we do um, in bite-sized form. The next thing is highlighting your agents. This will help boost their business and reputation and show agents at other firms what a great team you have. So because I started just snapping my life, I spent a lot of my life with agents. And fortunately, I love the agents that work with me. And I love the agents in my company. And I even sometimes love agents that work at other companies. And so what I do is, if I'm talking to an agent and we're having a conversation, or maybe they just did a deal and they're very excited about it, or the other day, one of my agents, she comes up to me in the hallway, outside of the building, and says, Michael, I just got a referral today I'm really excited about. Remember Joel? So, uh, you know, I worked together and, and, and we did a really good job. His parents called me and said, our son said you did a really good job helping him sell his home. We want to buy a home. You think you can help us? And she was so excited and I said, hold on one second. Snap, turn it back on, I said, guys, you won't believe this, I'm pretty excited, you know? She just got this client, this is how you do business through referrals. Sydney, what just happened? And she said what just happened, and Sydney, it was in the moment, the right there, we didn't spend five minutes preparing for the snap, you gotta quickly go for it, and people at, were all commenting to me saying, that is so cool, it's so cool to be there in the moment when something like that develops and an experience like that happens. And Sydney now is what happened to be the agent in that particular situation. Um, now, she's exposed to all the people watching me. And all those people now probably go and watch her. And now she's building her Snap community because I'm promoting her in that way. My suggestions, this is the last slide over here. This is some of my suggestions for how you should use Snapchat, how I use Snapchat, um, and um, you know, some, some quick takeaways. Number one, Snapchat. Hunt for relationships, not leads. Snapchat is not somewhere you go to get leads. It's somewhere that you go to build and better your relationships. Snapchat is not a platform to hunt for leads, it's a platform to hunt for relationships. Relations might lead to future business and referrals, but it's not a pitching platform. If you sell hard, people will just stop watching you. So the thing is, for me, since I've been on Snap, I've met so many people because when I see them posting something, I'm engaged. And when they see me posting something, they're engaged. And I've now, in a very short period of time, connected with people that I never connected with before. And a lot of people even that, that, that I know know all these people and I just never knew them because I didn't spend as much time in some of the other social platforms as they did or I didn't spend as much time going to certain events like they did. So I didn't have these connections where I met these people in real life traveling at all these different events. Um, but now I'm building all those relationships really, really quickly and I know what those people's lives are like. I know what sometimes what their kids are like. I know, about, I know, them, I know them as real people. Um, and so I'm building relationships and, and that's helping me in my professional career across industries and that's also helping me just with other agents because I'm connecting with the agents all over the place at all of the firms and I'm not pitching them to come work for me. I honestly don't care whether they come and work in my firm or not. I'm definitely not pitching them. What I want to do is help better them by showing them some of the best practices that I do and not instructing them on what to do, but just showing them what I do. And some people will find things that I do that they like, and honestly, I've grown and learned so much by watching what other people are doing, and it's bettering me as a person, it's bettering me, bettering my game. Acknowledge those that interact with you by helping them meet other users. I display the Snapchat handle, screen name of snappers who comment, so then my other viewers will follow them. 
When I get people that communicate with me on Snap, and I'm getting a lot of people now to communicate with me on Snap, I pay it forward, I get them back, so to speak, I acknowledge them by taking their name sometimes and sticking it on my Snap so that other people can start following them. I help build their community because they care enough to interact with me. That means they care about me, I care about them, I wanna help them grow their community like my community is growing. Um, and that's something that I, that I try to do frequently. Lastly, be creative, be real, have fun. Snapchat is a fun place to hang out. And because you can't edit it very much, don't take it too seriously. There's a hashtag that people talk about a lot called the one snap uh, chats or something like that, which basically means you snap it one time, don't, do, don't, don't try to do it again and make it better. Don't, you know, once you snap it, post it. My last piece of advice to you, I learned this the other day, is somebody said to me, if you're on Snapchat and you never post something that makes you uncomfortable, you're not using Snapchat right. Because it's supposed to be raw. And in real life, we all sometimes have bloopers and we say some things or we just spit things out or we, we, we mumble or we do whatever and it's just real life. And Snapchat's supposed to be real life. And so once in a while, you're gonna be a little bit uncomfortable because people are gonna see the real you. But hello, that's the whole point of Snapchat. That's what I got. Any, anybody have any questions or anything about Snapchat? It's awesome. Thank awesome. you very much. Awesome. Well done. Yeah. If anybody would like this slide, this presentation, just connect with me on Facebook, Meyer Group NYC, send me a private message. You guys obviously will have my information, and I'm happy to email it out to you guys. All right? Thank you, Michael. Cool. You're welcome.